Hi guys, my name is Michael Sipos and I'm the UFIFIS Extension Florida Sea Grant Agent for Collier County. And today I am going to show you how to fillet one of the more plentiful freshwater fish there is in this state. Really fun to fight, great panfish, the bluegill. So look at this lunker right over here. Uh, we're going to go over some life history characteristics, show you how to fillet them, as well as maybe do a, even a, a whole fish. So. Um, yeah, watch the video, learn some stuff, and uh, please do the survey after you watched it uh, to let us know how you liked it, and it helps us do our job as well as ensure that programs like these keep on going. So, thanks for watching. I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer to get a closer look at my hands and what we're doing, and we'll get started. Okay, so let's get started. So here is our bluegill. This is a very fun panfish to fight. They're pound for pound, really great game quality for freshwater fishing. Um, they're in the family Cincharcidae, which is the same family as largemouth bass, so their relative actually consumes them. And that's a family that has about 30 members of different kind of sunfishes out there. The scientific name for this fish is Lipomus macrochiris. And to give you an idea for scale, this lunker right here is about nine inches total length and about one pound. So the Florida record for this fish is two pounds, 15 ounces. And the world record, the IGFA world record for this fish is four pounds, 12 ounces. So we're gonna give you, uh, show you how to fillet it. And then we actually have another one that I could show you how to do uh, if you wanted to pan fry it whole. So I am gonna use a smaller knife for this fish than I usually use. And you'll start right over here. But before we start cutting, I'll give you distinguishing characteristics that this sunfish, this bluegill, has over a different kind of sunfish. So there, in Florida, there's a spotted sunfish, which is, you know, could look similar in some cases, but it has blue around the eyes, like little blue dots. There's the red breast sunfish that has a really long sort of preoperculum kind of flap right here, ear. It's longer than this one. Um, then there's the red ear sunfish, which is otherwise known as the shell cracker, and they have sort of like a little red, red stripe around there. But the bluegill, a lot of people are like, oh, they'll just call everything that's, you know, a brim, a bream, a bluegill in the water. But these have a distinguishing characteristic right here. It's hard to see, but I'll maybe shop something in there in the video. It's a little smudge dot there. And they have about six to eight different vertical bars that could be either lightened up or darkened. There's a lot of different phenotypic plasticity in this fish, which means they could look different in different environments, especially during baiting season. So once we talked about that, let's go ahead and start filleting. So I'm gonna make that incision around here. Um, the, Florida, the Florida regulations for panfish is 50 panfish. That's a generalized statewide regulation. So it often takes a couple of these to make a good dinner, but they're tasty nonetheless. And that panfish regulation is different than for crappie. So for crappie, you're only allowed 25 crappie, while you're allowed 50 panfish, which includes a lot of other species of those sunfish. So I made a small incision around the back. Uh, a lot of times, the guys will have so many of these that they'll just go down across the spine and over. I like to call it sort of the head boat fillet job, but I like to, you know, especially if I have a few of these, get as much meat as possible. So I made that incision, lifting it up, doing a skim. These are really fun fish to fight, especially if you have little ones at home, just because uh, they're so readily accepting of, you know, a little piece of bread on a hook, a little piece of cricket or a worm. So skimming along the backbone, lifting up, cutting, and we're going to keep on going. These fish like to inhabit um, freshwater ponds, lakes, and they'll live in slow moving streams. Pretty much most bodies of freshwater in Florida, you'll be able to find a bluegill or other species of sunfish out there. So here is the fillet. I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the edge of the table so I can hang my knife butt over the edge. And with that sawing pulling motion, I'm gonna separate the meat from the skin. And really, you're gonna just get a nice tasty nugget out of it. <laughs> so 
So that's not too, too much, but oh man, fried up, these are delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out the rib cage. Uh, it's gonna be around here, but then there's also these like floating ribs, so you're gonna have to make an incision from this area down and remove those ribs. Right now, uh, you can find them bedding. They'll spawn during that summertime. Um, it really just depends. I want to do a lot of age and growth stuff with this species, but since they're so ubiquitous in the United States, they're endemic to the eastern seaboard. Uh, however, they've been, at, <laughs> from, a, from a variety of sources, introduced to the majority of the states in the United States. I've heard all states but Alaska. Um, they're really fun for their fighting qualities and their food fish uh, uh, quality. And also, a lot of people will stock them because they are forage fish for other fish species. So like that largemouth bass or pike or muskie or even some species of catfish will consume bluegill. So some people will put bluegill in their pond to have fish for their larger game fish to eat. Just repeating what I did on the other side. Try to look also on the age of sexual maturity. Can't really rely on size too much because there could be some density dependent growth with you know uh, resources limited to that pond or whatever. Um, so a, a mature bluegill can be anywhere from about two to seven years old, depending on the population that you're dealing with. There's your little fillet right over there. Put him off to the side. And repeat. Some species of sunfish can actually hybridize. Um, the bluegill is actually, it has a popular hybrid, which is the green sunfish female and the male uh, uh, bluegill. And they'll create hybrid uh, bluegill that they'll stock into ponds and they're uh, a little bit more ferocious to get a little bit larger. Um, I could include some information on that in the description if you want to read more about it. And they actually hybridize in the wild, although it might be a little bit more rare because they have to have some of the same mating and spawning behavior as their counterparts. So this spe this actual bluegill I saw with a bunch of red ear uh, sunfish or those su shell crackers. So there could have been a chance of that spawning during that time. So let me go ahead and get our other fish and I will show you how people prepare these fish whole. And it's fun to prepare and eat fish whole. It's like a novelty because you can pick around the bones and you actually get a larger yield. Uh, with a lot of the whole fish that I cook in salt water, I'll leave the head on. But with these freshwater fish, they, they usually cut the head off and gut it at the same time. And then we'll scale it and cut slits and season it and batter it and, or put it in some cornmeal. So the way I saw it online is they, uh, they just make an incision. You try to feel where, where the most meat in the head is. So you'll probably just make a cut around here, decapitate it, pull out the guts, and then scale it. So to scale it, I'm not gonna do this here on my lanai because it'll cause a big mess. You can get a butter knife, you could get a fish descaler. Some species of fish, you could actually use a hose and just blow the scales off. These are a little bit more slimier and the scales are a little closer. So you can get your knife, start rubbing it, going like that. But like I said, don't really want to have too many scales on my lanai floor, so I'm going to wait until I'm outside to do the scaling process. So just because of their popularity too, these bluegills have actually been introduced to the different countries. Let me go ahead and lift up that operculum, that like little ear. Do this cut. Cut down. And I'll repeat that on the other side and see if I can twist this off. So when they're spawning, they will go to the edge of a pond and create these nests. And it's sort of communal where you'll see these males guarding these uh, sort of 
um, sandy rocky holes that they'll divot out. They almost look like like beehives if you see them from up on top because they'll be hole, 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 hole with male bluegills guarding the eggs while females will come in there and spawn. Uh, these have a cool characteristic where they'll have a sneaker male, so they'll have a smaller male in there and sometimes they'll sneak in and fertilize the eggs before these larger males can. And sometimes they'll, they'll look like more like females or they'll exhibit female characteristics uh, to sneak in that nest and uh, fertilize those eggs. So I went ahead and decapitated the fish and then I will go ahead and scoop out the guts. And that's pretty much it. You know, I'd take a hose or some sort of water source to clean out the body cavity, um, but like I said, for this, for this, you're gonna want to um, scale it. So use some sort of butter knife. There's actually commercial scalers available. A lot of people have different tricks. I've seen people use some, like an egg beater kind of thing to do that with. Uh, make sure you don't hurt your fingers and you have a good grip on them because they're a little bit slimier. But um, I would just get this, cut some slits in there, um, season it roll it around some cornmeal or some flour then just fry it whole and it's delicious so yep that's the bluegill be sure to read the description um, please fill out our survey so we know how we did um, hopefully next week I'm gonna have some new saltwater species for you guys to watch and yeah thanks so much for watching and I will keep on making these videos <laughs> thanks guys